Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Um, first off, I know I said my last video was the last video I was gonna make in front of the book stack because I was gonna build my bookshelf and that didn't happen. I've been super busy, but I swear this one will be the last one in front of the book stack. I'm going to build my bookshelf this week and I'm super, super excited about it. Today, I'm going to go over my books that I read in, what month was it? I was about to say March, not March, May, a few months after. But basically this month sucked for me for reading. I had a bunch of failed readathons, including like my own readathon. I was in a reading slump and it just didn't go super well. But I'm just gonna tell you about the books that I read anyways. So first off, I read this book last month and totally forgot to talk about it. It is A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett Sinclair. If that gives you any idea of how memorable it was in my mind, it would be accurate because I wasn't crazy about this book. Um, I thought that, so basically it's like a urban fantasy where like Greek gods exist in modern day and they're like big celebrities and stuff and basically there's Persephone and she gets wrapped up in a deal with Hades but I thought Persephone was kind of annoying throughout this there was a lot she was just very like determined to think that like Hades is a bad and an evil person when they're like but what about this and she's like no and it was just kind of annoying which I know it wouldn't be exciting if they just met and fell in love and there was nothing in the way but I wasn't really that impressed of it. I really liked the idea of like the gods in today's world, the Greek gods, and I thought that that was really fun, but that was all that I really liked about it. Um, I still have a bookmarking because I never even read the last chapter. That's how much I was <laughs> kind of ready to be over with it. Um, but yeah, I read it and I wasn't a huge fan. So now I know I'm not going to probably read the like a zillion other books she's going to be writing in this series. So then I had my own readathon that I hosted with my friend Jane at the Bookaholic. Um, I'm pretty sure she made a vlog for it. I'll link it down below. I tried to make a vlog for it. I started it. It didn't work. Basically, I got super, super sick from my COVID shot that I got. And um, it was only for like a day, but it was only like a 72 hour readathon. So that kind of really put me out of my focus for reading and I did not read anywhere near as much as I wanted to but I did read Misery by Stephen King. I think I gave this four stars. I don't know if I mentioned what I gave A Touch of Darkness. I gave that three stars but I gave this four stars and I really enjoyed it. I read it on audiobook and uh, um, physically just so I could get through it pretty quickly because I know that King is one for being very what's the what's the word I can't think of the word that people use to say slow but nicely slow burn Stephen King is known for the slow burn sometimes so slow that the fire goes out entirely but this wasn't too bad I think listening to it on audiobook definitely helped I really liked the narrator for the audiobook and for some reason I never have watched the movie and I've never been like actually spoiled for what happens at the end of this so I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought it was really good. I think it's actually really a good horror book because this is honestly everyone's worst fear that you get kidnapped and you are trapped with someone who is insane and either doesn't care about hurting you or actively wants to hurt you. And um, I think it was really, really good. I liked it a lot. There was definitely less... At the very beginning, there was ways that he described Annie that I was not a fan of and was really, really gross. But then throughout the rest of it, there was very minimal, like, kind of gross things that are in a lot of Stephen King's work. So I was a lot happier with that. I probably will be reading a few more Stephen King just because they are kind of like horror classics. Um, but I did really enjoy this and I thought it was a really good horror story and I am definitely going to watch the movie too. Then I read Tommy by Junji Ito. This I was so so excited for and I think I overhyped it a little bit. I liked it. I gave it three stars 
Um, also before reading it, I didn't realize that this is basically a collection of stories that he's written about this character, Tommy, that he's made in his head, um, Junji Ito. And so he's written like these stories over, I think like 10 years. And then they all come together in this book, which if I had known that before, I think it makes it much more enjoyable and a much more cool thing. Whereas while I was reading it, it wasn't as comprehensive of a like linear storyline as Uzumaki was for me, but that's because it wasn't meant to be. It was his collection of all these stories of Tommy that he's been working on for a decade. So that's pretty cool. I kind of wanted some more like, I don't know. I don't know what I wanted more of it is a lot of kind of the same stories over and over again, but I don't think that it was too repetitive. I still enjoyed it a lot and his art is stunning. So I really liked that, but I gave it three stars. I still did like it. I think I just overhyped it a little in my mind. Um, but basically this is about a woman. I'll just read the back because I love how it describes it on the back. Tommy is a femme fatale with long black hair and a beauty mark just under her left eye. She can seduce nearly any man and drive them to murder as well, even though the victim is often Tommy herself. While one lover seeks to keep her for himself, another grows terrified of the immortal succubus. But they soon realize that no matter how many times they kill her, the world will never be free of Tommy. So it was pretty good. I would recommend it. I'm definitely glad that I have it and that I can just like read it, go back to some of my favorite stories again if I want to. So if you did read it, my favorite chapters were probably the hospital the basement and the kiss i really liked and the what was the one at the end the like top model one was good as well but yeah it was very good good i liked it three stars um then i was reading this for ages um this put me in a reading slump i made a whole video talking about my Thoughts of this, it's um, it's spoiler free mostly. In the beginning, I'm very, very vague and I still continue to be very vague. So if you haven't read it yet, I think you can definitely watch it. I don't give anything away, but um, I knew that I had way too much to say about this to fit in one wrap up video. And so you can watch that if you wanna know my extensive thoughts, but basically to sum it all up, it was way too long. She could have taken 200 pages out of this and I am really not happy with how it ended. That's it. Um, then I'm going to touch on some of the audiobooks that I read. Like, so I'm just gonna go through everything I read chronologically. Because one I read and it was so, so good. And that is The Shadows by Alex North. So I read The Whisper Man by Alex North last month and I gave it a five out of five. I thought it was such a good thriller, but The Shadows was so good. It's literally a multi POV and basically it's very very reminiscent of the slender man murders basically there is this murder many years ago where a bunch of some kids murdered another kid in the woods because they were stuff to do with lucid dreaming and they did it as a sacrifice to this entity and the leader of the gang of kids disappeared and basically copycat murders are happening um things are going on and it is so good it is multi pov it's very very character focused which i love in a thriller um the twists i did not see coming it was so cool and it has a huge aspect of lucid dreaming so the lucid dreaming the like the shadows the kind of like it's not about it's not slender man but it's clearly heavily inspired by the slender man like murder case but it was everything that I wanted in a thriller. It was so good. I highly, highly recommend you read this book, especially if you like true crime, specifically that case. Um, it was awesome. I got everything I wanted out of it and more. Um, it was great. I probably will be buying the physical book and rereading it eventually because it was just so good. And then I participated in the Majin -a -thon. Prithon, um, hosted by my friends Staja and Al, and I'll link their channels and like the videos that they did down below. But um, I wanted to read like four books and I was already behind. I was trying to finish um, that freaking <laughs> from Blood Nash third book. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna get all the books read that I wanted to, which was super disappointing. But I started with 
The Last Story of Nina Lee by Nancy Juyun Kim. I was so excited about this book. The cover is so pretty. I just really love the like hot pink. I thought it was so cute. It was a Reese Witherspoon book of the month and I don't know what it is, but as soon as a book gets chosen as her book of the month, I want to read it. I want to read it so bad. So this was one of the ones that was on book of the month. So I got it for $10, which was awesome. So um, I was super excited for this. It's basically about a um, mother-daughter story. It goes back and forth between the POVs of the mother when she immigrated to LA from Korea and the daughter who found her mother dead in her apartment and is now trying to piece together what happened and if it was an accident and she's finding out more and more about her mother's life. I had such high hopes. I was so into it. It has beautiful descriptions of Koreatown and LA and the food and I was so into it. But um, Mina, the mother's um, POVs were good. The daughter uh, sucked so bad. Um, she just was completely bland. I don't really think she had any character growth. At the end, how things ended up was just so bizarre. And the way that the main, the main character, the daughter, like reacts to these events is so weird. And it seems almost like it's like very dark humor, but that kind of dark humor was not present through the entirety of the book. So you're just left really weirded out. It was so, so weird, such a disappointing end to this. I really didn't enjoy it at all. And I really wanted to give it a good chance. I was so excited for it. So I was super disappointed, but at the ending, I was just so confused and upset and just weirded out. So I gave this a two stars, sorry, but um, I really wanted to give it a good chance and I was let down a lot. So I'm upset, I'm upset with Reese, but whatever she is forgiven because she really can't do any wrong so the second book that i read for the majinathon readathon was severance by ling ma i read that on audiobook it was so good i gave it a five out of five and i think i enjoyed it so much because i had just read um a few months ago the end of the world or something i'll pop a picture here because i know that's not what it's called I think I have it wrong, but basically that book was like a commentary mainly on what, how people would react to the end of the world. And you really don't get a lot of juicy apocalyptic content of what is happening. And Severance delivers that, it delivers all of it. You get to watch every single step as the world kind of falls apart, as these things start happening. It was so juicy. It gave me every single detail that I wanted and that was just so enjoyable for me and I ate it all up. But basically um, what happens is people start getting taken over um, and coming down with this fever and the fever causes them to basically go brain dead and just go about their normal routines. So they like brush their teeth, put lipstick on their face, but like they've put lipstick on their face like 37 times. They've washed the dishes like 37 times. This sink's overflowing, but they're not doing anything about it. And I think it comes along with a really cool commentary of the monotony of our lives that we're used to. And then it all uh, it switches between different times in the main character's life. Um, before, and after it talks a lot about her parents as Chinese immigrants, which I thought was such a cool part of this book and really delivered. And it talked about her then working with factories in China to produce Bibles. And I think that's such a cool, there's so many cool commentaries. I really think that this was a literary fiction and that if I got a physical copy and really went into it, there'd be so many cool themes and stuff to look into. But um, it's delivered, the character is very blunt and it's kind of like a dry delivery maybe, but it was really, really good. I liked it. And then it, so it switches back and forth between you get to see the progression of the fever taking over the world and basically the world ending, but you also have the now point of view where she has joined this group of people to survive amidst the apocalypse. And it turns out they're kind of like a cult 
and she's just trying to survive in this very bizarre uh, power structure that's been made in this group and basically they're like navigating America that's literally like been reduced to nothing because barely anyone is alive anymore and it was so good. I really really enjoyed this book. I highly recommend it if you want an apocalyptic book where you get to watch the um, slow destruction of society. I thought that part was so interesting. Um, it was also an amazing um, story about her um, parents and reasons that they immigrated and their thoughts and their feelings after they've immigrated and their wishes and I thought it was really really good and so I've probably talked about that for like five minutes but it's worth it because I loved it so I really really highly recommend that. Last quick little note I read My Hair Academia 3. I've been reading this forever I don't know if I I'm pretty sure I actually finally finished it this month but I think I finished it as in like I had this much left because I clearly need to buy many more of these and get much farther along because I want to catch up where I am in the series but um these are expensive books are expensive and I just haven't been spending my money on those things um so I'm not ordering three books from book of the month this month which I usually always do because I'm like no I'm buying manga so I think I'm gonna buy the next two of this just because I love the anime and the manga is delivering I obviously I'll probably give every single one of these a five stars and it's a very very biased rating and I don't really care and so then I started reading in May but I'm still reading now The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. um it's really really thick I am not I've been super busy so another reason why I wasn't reading a bunch of stuff is I picked up a second job and I've just been working a lot and really busy and so reading has kind of fallen to the wayside I've been like really into playing games on my switch and doing some like cross stitch and embroidery so those hobbies have kind of taken up what little free time that i have instead of reading but i'm getting back into reading because i'm really enjoying this i have a really really awesome tbr for this month that i'm excited for if you haven't seen that i'll link it up above because i'm super excited i'm hoping it'll pull me out of this reading slump i've been in but i am enjoying this it's just long so it's taking me a long time to get through but that's okay so yeah um, I will definitely finish with this soon and this will be on my June wrap up. I totally forgot that this month I also started and I DNF'd maybe the first book that I can remember DNFing ever and I was really sad about it but um, basically I listened to the audiobook. I got like maybe 40% of the way through Queenie and I decided to DNF it. I just was not loving it. I was not loving the the breakup ish story and Queenie's just having a lot of really shitty encounters and really in a self-destructive behavior and I know that eventually in the end she probably really figures herself out but I just could not sit through it all I just really was not enjoying it and I just think I don't really like contemporary romance which I was thinking oh I like contemporary fiction so contemporary romance is just contemporary fiction with romance added like I should be fine but I was not enjoying it and so I really gave it a try but in the end I decided I need to DNF it because if I finish it I really didn't enjoy it and I think a lot of people really like this book and it doesn't deserve a one star from me but that is what my enjoyment level of it was so I did DNF it sorry Queenie I just think this is solidifying in my head contemporary romance isn't really super for me so thank you so much for watching this video make sure you leave a like down below and let me know if you are in a reading slump this month because I feel like literally every single person that I know had some kind of like reading slump ish it was very widespread I feel like but um I hope that this month is going to be better for the whole community and that everyone's going to get everything read but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.